In this video, I'm gonna break down how I created the print effect on this Brutalism poster that I made Adobe Photoshop. What's going on everyone? My name is Tom from Dread Labs and I'm a visual artist and graphic designer. If you want to learn how to create a Brutalism poster with a really realistic print effect on them, then this is the video for you. I've been doing this style for years at this point and in today's video I'm going to give you some pointers to create this hyper realistic print effect in Adobe Photoshop. So without any further ado, let's get started. So here in Photoshop we have our base art. I'm going to go through how I made this really quickly, uh, but in short, I made a poster base in Adobe Illustrator, which is seen here. It's mainly consisting of a couple of fonts, some icons of a kitsune. These are from a vector pack that I have on my web store if you're interested. These two arts I found on Google. I put a simple threshold filter on them as well as a noise. And the noise is just to add in some little grain and more detail into them because without the noise, I don't really think the threshold effect looks that good. Finally, we have the skull here, and this is a 3D render from an asset pack called Cranium Pack, which is also available on my website. The link for that will be down in the description. And this basically has the same treatment, except for that there's also another stroke in there. So this is what the render looks like clean. I added some noise to it and a stroke around it, and later added some threshold to it. So this is the base R that we'll be working with. So the first thing that we want to do is if you used any threshold effects like I did, to remove all of the white backgrounds. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna group all of this together and call this base art. And if we double click on our layer group, this will bring up the layer style menu, but it also has some blending options. And all we wanna do is make sure to drag this slider inward. And as you can see, if you did it correctly, you can see the transparency grid in the background. And what this basically does is all of the gray values above this threshold layer will be invisible. So you can split this a little bit and what this basically does is this creates a fade in between there. So rather than a harsh threshold effect this will create a fade between these gray values and they will gradually become more invisible. So if we zoom in here that makes sense because most of it is threshold but for example this part here will still be kind of like visible I guess. <laughs> so the next part I'm going to do is do a little bit of an ink bleed simulation. And there's a really quick way to do this. I have a Photoshop action for it if you wanna get it for yourself on my website. It's called Type Melt, and it does a really good job on doing this fairly quickly. I'm gonna demonstrate how this works fairly quickly, but after I showed you, I'm gonna show you how to do this step-by-step step so you don't necessarily have to buy Type Melt. It's just a tool to save time, and I don't wanna force you to get anything from my asset web store. So before we run Type Melt, all you need to do is right-click and convert your group to a smart object. And now we're ready to run Type Melt We'll click on continue this will explain a little bit on what's happening now and what we're going to do is we're going to place some blurs wherever we feel that we want the ink bleeds to happen so for example i would always choose larger spots i'm just going to delete all of the pins here and i think that's all of them except for this one so now if we have one pin in we can blur the whole thing as you can see but the cool part is if you press somewhere else, you can add more blur somewhere. For example, I want to have some bleed between the top of the eye and the T here. So I'm going to add in a blur of 14 pixels perhaps, maybe a little bit larger. But this will make all of this text illegible. So what I'm going to do is press a pin here and lower the blur here to maybe one point. And as you can see, there's now a fade between these blurs. So all I'm gonna do is pick a couple of points in my images where I want the ink bleed to occur and where I want the ink bleed to not occur. And you're gonna have to do this to your own design because that will be probably different from mine. As you can see, I'm adding some pins in here to make sure that everything below this line is sharp. I'll add in some more bleed to here between the U and the N and make sure to reduce that ink bleed here as well. You can add some ink bleed here. Here around the edges is always kind of nice. And I think this looks quite all right for now, but if you want to change this later, don't worry, you will be able to. So if you feel like you're fine with the positions of your blurs, click OK here at the top. And now, as you can see, we're adding a levels effect that basically ensures you where the ink bleeds are happening. And as you can see here between the T and the I and around at the letter B, there's a slight ink bleed happening here as well. 
but the text is in most places still legible. But of course you can play around with the levels as well. So the more you go to the right here, you always have to make sure that you're crunching in these black and white values a lot. That way you get an actual one color printed effect rather than a fade. And that's what we're kind of looking for. And I think somewhere around here is quite all right for me. And as you can see, we now have the same layer that we had before we ran type melt, but with some ink bleed effects applied to it. And you can actually see what was happening just now. If we double click on the smart object, this is all that happened to our design here. First, we added a white background and a black color overlay. And this is something that is just in my asset pack. And that's just to make sure that we actually have a black and white layer to work with on the base. But since we already did it in our tutorial, it wasn't really necessary. But once we had the black and white layer, we applied the blurs in different spaces, as you can see right here. And then added the levels and a slight wave effect. I'm going to go into this a little bit later down in the tutorial, what this does, because we're going to add a little bit more of this. And again, we did that same blending trick where I would basically eliminate the white colors out of this design. So that ends up with this. So if you're completely stuck with this, all that's happening is, so if we have the base art right here without the white layer removed, all you need to do is click the smart object, go to filter, blur gallery, field blur, place the blurs wherever you see fit. Click okay, go to image, adjustments, levels. Crunch in these black and white values until you have something that you're satisfied with. For me, that's somewhere around here. Click OK. And let's continue the tutorial from here. One more time, if you want to get type meld or any of the assets used in this video, go to dreadlabs.net. Link is in the description down below. So now we want to eliminate these really tight lines that you can see here, because that's not really happening in reality. Especially if we go to these vertical or horizontal lines, these are way too perfect. So let's zoom in on these a little bit and I'll show you how to make them a little bit more organic. You want to go to filter, distort, wave. You want to up the amount of generators. This is basically how much randomness you will add. The wavelength can be between somewhere between two and five. The amplitude can be one and two and the horizontal and vertical version can be two as well. And as you can see, you're already like kind of adding some distortion in here. And it's always a little bit difficult to see because the wave filter in Photoshop hasn't really got any live previews. So I think I kind of want to go back into here and see what happens if we make these values a little bit larger. Okay, this is a little bit too much for my opinion. And I think the waves are a little bit too close to each other. So if we do five and 10, as you can see, the lines between the distortion are a little bit better, but this will probably mean that we'll lower these two sizes again. And maybe we'll up these scale ones. So if we zoom out now, you can kind of see that there's some squiggly lines. So there's a little bit of distortion in there and you can play with these settings however you want. The wavelength is basically the size of these waves that you can see in here. So if we up these, for example, to 10 and 20, these will be larger and you kind of want to keep them small, but not too small. I would probably do something between three and 15 and keep the amplitude and the scale as low as possible. Otherwise you're going to get some really weird distorted stuff and that's not really realistic for an ink bleed. Now we have some ink bleed simulations. Let's see how we can actually process this, add some texturing and make it look realistic. First up, let's remove the white values of this image by holding Alt or Option on our keyboard and dragging this white part of the slider inward and this one to around half. I'm gonna right click and make this into a smart object. So now the base art is hidden inside another smart object. So first we'll add in some texture to the background so we can actually have a background rather than this transparency grid. You can use any paper texture that you like. What I'm gonna do is grab a cardboard paper texture from my Dreadlabs paper pack volume three. I'm gonna scale this up so it covers the entire image and remove that to the background here. The next thing that I wanna simulate is the actual bleed into the ink. So if something is printed on paper, oftentimes the ink, because it's liquid, bleeds a little bit into the paper. And these lines are kind of harsh, as you can see. So what I'm gonna do is go to filter, blur, box blur. I'm gonna add a box blur of one. And just to zoom in and you, so you can see the difference a little bit, this will add in a little bit of extra pixel data. It's really small, so it's really subtle. And I actually wanna increase this a little bit. 
So I'm gonna go and add in another box blur, this time of three pixels, I guess. What I'm gonna do next is, it's getting a little bit too intense now, so I'm gonna click on this little button right here and change the opacity and make it 50%. And this way we can still see this box blur, but it's getting a little bit more subtle. And we wanna add in one more box blur of eight pixels. And again, lower the opacity to 50%. And now you get this kind of like glowy bleed kind of, and that's maybe a little bit too much. So we'll change the blend modes of the two top box blurs to multiply. And this is a lot better, I think. I wanna make the cardboard texture a little bit lighter and we're gonna remove a little bit of the saturation. Like this. So now we wanna blend this thing together with the background texture. And you probably already guessed it. All we need to do is go to the blending options. And instead of going, getting this one, I'm gonna go and focus on the underlying layer. And this will basically determine how much of the underlying layers will come through this specific layer. So if we slide in this texture, the lighter parts of the texture it will actually start blending in with our design. And if we split these two by holding Alt or Option on our keyboard and clicking and dragging, you will be able to find whatever way you want to have your design blend with the texture. This is a little bit a matter of taste. If you just drag it in really well, it's gonna look really washed out. And the more you keep it to the right, the heavier, the darker the print looks. I think somewhere around here is pretty nice. So another thing that you can do is do some tearing and wearing on your design. And the way that I'm gonna do that is you can just grab any grunge texture that you have laying around. All you need to do is drop in a texture, rasterize it, turn it black and white, maybe add some contrast to it. I'm gonna do that with the curves here, pressing Command or Control on my keyboard with letter M. And this will bring up the curves layer menu and you want to crunch in the contrast until you get something like this so that the image is mostly white but there's a lot of like darker areas in here and now you, all you need to do is go to edit define brush preset we will click on okay you can name this anything you want really i can now delete this layer add in a layer mask for my base art go to my brushes and as you can see i now have this nice crunch brush so if I click on it, maybe a little bit hard to see. So let me just toggle off the mask. This is without, and this is with. And if we look into the layer mask, as you can see, there's a lot of like black spots in there and just adding some really subtle wearing and tearing. And if you want to add it more, all you need to do is just paint it in more around different places. And as you can see, this will get more and more grunge and more wearing and tearing on your design. I am fine, however, with leaving it the way it is. And what I did to add in an extra layer of depth is drop in one of these Kitsune masks in the background. So I'm gonna do that really quickly. Can't really find the Kitsune. Uh, it's supposed to be in here. Oh, here it is. I'll just do it like this. Okay, so the first thing that I wanna do actually is run the type lap effect again. This time I'm gonna go with the quick one. Uh, this is basically the same processing as we've done before on the base art, so I'm not gonna go over it again. And I'm just gonna make sure that this is a different color. Something like this is doing the trick already. Um, I'm also gonna duplicate the entire processing of the smart filters with the box blur. And I can do that by holding Alt or Option on my keyboard and then clicking on the smart filters and dragging them over to the other layer. As you can see, this also simulates that same effect already. The only problem is that it's blending together with the print as well, and I don't really want that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna group this. I'm gonna hold Command or Control on my keyboard and click on the thumbnail of my base art, and then hold Alt or Option when I click on the mask of the group. And this will basically make my group in which the background of the mask is invisible wherever my print is visible. And the reason why I did this in a group is because I wanna add another mask to the mask itself, I guess. And just to make it procedural, uh, we're gonna just use two masks rather than just painting over this specific one. And we're gonna add some wear and tear in there as well. Like this. All right, so we're basically finished with the design. One thing to note here is this method that I use is completely procedural and the sense that we can still go back all the way into Illustrator to change the text, for example, and just go back and save up all of these smart objects 
and the effect will still be done completely in the same way. To demonstrate this, I want to go and change the ink bleed in here. I think it's just a little bit too much. So all I need to do is double click on the thumbnail. This is the base art and I just double click on the blur gallery. And I'm going to go to this pin right here and just lower the blur a little bit to maybe six pixels and then click OK. I'm just going to save this file up and click away. And it's still a bit much, I feel like. So, but just to show you the difference, this is what it used to look like. Let me just zoom in. And this is with my editing. So there is a slight difference in here. But this, of course, is just to show you that this is completely procedural and you can just edit anything after processing this complete effect. If this tutorial was a little bit above your expertise, if you found it a little bit difficult, but you still want to simulate your own stuff with the ink bleed effects that you saw in this video, you can do a couple of things. Or you can grab the Type Melt Asset Pack on my web shop and the Harsh Ink Bleed Effect will demonstrate it right for you. Or you can go to my Patreon page where you can become a subscriber for my Patreon channel and get access to all of the PSD files and other work files that I used in this video, as well as all of my other tutorials. That means that you can simply use this PSD for your own designs and use the same ink bleed processing that I just used in this video, complete with the same textures and processing and everything, and just use your own designs for the exact same ink bleed effect. The link for my Patreon, as well as my web store, will be in the description down below, like always. But if you have any difficulties, feel free to place a comment down below or join us on Discord where I can help you personally. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like on it and subscribe to my channel if you're interested in more tutorials, because at this point my channel already has hundreds of tutorials on this very same topic. Without any further ado, this is Tom from Dreadlabs tuning out. Thank you so much for watching and I hopefully see you guys in the next video.